Welcome back, it's Jamie Hartley again from Crossfader and today we're getting up close and personal with Pioneer DJ's brand new DDJ XP1 controller. This is an add-on controller for Recordbox 5.0. It was announced as the new software was, was released. Uh, it's really making use of all the new features of Recordbox and some of the current features that are implemented in the software. We're gonna get up close and personal, go through all the different features and everything you can do on this controller. Um, and then at the end, I'll have a chat about what I think about it and who I'd recommend it for. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff um, to help us keep doing what we're doing. Okay, so where do we start? This is such an exciting product. I can't wait to share some of the things I've found out about it, but I'm gonna run through all the features first of all. Now, this is an add-on controller for Recordbox. It doesn't have any jog wheels or tempo adjusts, so you wouldn't want to just buy this by itself. You definitely want to incorporate it into some form of DJ setup. Now, out of the box, it actually comes with the Recordbox DJ performance mode license key, so you get the full version of Recordbox. And it also comes with the DVS license key, so you get DVS mode as an add-on, um, so you can use turntables or CDJs with Recordbox. Okay, first of all, it's got 32 colored pads. For each deck, we've got 16, and in the brand new version of Recordbox 5.0, they've upped the hot cue count from 8 to 16, so we've got access to 16 hot cues on either side. It's as simple as the first pad mode here is hot cue. We can set up hot cues just using the pads. If we want to delete, we can use the shift button here and delete the hot cues. You can color code these hot cues within the record box software, just right clicking, edit the pad color, and you'll notice it correlates on here as well. The next mode is pad effects one, and anyone that's familiar with the record box controllers already will be familiar with pad effects, but if you're not, then what these are are tactile pads that you can turn on and off just by holding the pad and it activates the effect. So for example, let's start the track and then we can choose different effects. And now instead of eight pad effects, we've got 16. We've got a release effect here, which is just an echo out. But what we can do is combine these different effects create some unique sounds. Now if you're not happy with the effects and how they're set up, you can click the gear icon here and change the effects within the record box software. Change all the parameters, change the intensity of the dry and wet, and you've got total control over all the effects. We've also got, if I just pause that, we've also got um, pad effects too. So you've got access to another 16 different effects, so you can really go to town on your effects. Next up on the performance pads, we've got beat jump. So we can beat jump left and right throughout the track when the track's playing or even when it's paused, it goes right down so we can go up and down from one beat here to up and down 512 beats I think it is so we can show different amounts of beats either using the screen and these two arrows and we can go right down to fine which is the most minute adjustment ever right up to 128 beats sorry left and right this helps when you're setting up hot cues or loops or anything like that to beat jump through the track. Now I use the left and right arrows on the screen to show different beat jump values, but you can actually use the page buttons, which are here and here, to go left and right, and it shows different amounts of beat, um, beat jump values on the screen itself. Underneath beat jump, if we hold shift and then press beat jump, it goes onto the beat loop, which is short for auto loop in the new version of Recordbox 5.0. Again, let's set the track off. We can just go shift and beat jump into beat loop and we've got access to right down from 164th of a loop, which just sounds ridiculous, right up to, what have we got there? 512. So again, a bit too long, but you've got all your common beat loops. One beat, two beats, four, eight, 16, 32. Press it again to undo. We've also got, while we're talking about loops, a four beat loop right up here on the top. So you don't always have to go into the beat jump, I mean to the beat loop mode. We can activate four beat loop there, no matter what mode we're in. You can also half and two times using these two buttons here. And if that's not enough, you can manually set the loops using in and out. Let's stop the track there. Next mode, we have the sampler. You won't be able to hear this because I haven't got it rooted through the mix that I've got it plugged into, but if you use the sampler at all, you can access up to the 16 different pads for the sampler. This is where you could save one-shot samples or even loops to activate at any point in the mix. 
Underneath the sampler is where it starts to get interesting. If we hold shift and sample it, it moves to key shift. Now what this does is it moves the track up and down in semitones. So it maps out all these different pads to different um, keys and different semitones. If I set the track off again and then go to key shift, I can then go up and down. And this goes up a semitone at a time. Or if I go back to the start, I could go down. And you'll notice on the screen, this is where it is on the screen. We can go up and down on the semitones where I'm clicking my mouse. When it's in key shift mode, the track continues playing. It doesn't move to any other point. It just changes the key. If you're, for example, up here in a totally different key and want to jump back to the original key, but you're not in that mode, we can just press master tempo, which is here, which will lock the, the um, key back to its original key at any point. If we stop that again there. In the key shift mode, we can actually access even more than this. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven semitones. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. And then we can use the pages to show different, even more. So we're here, seven semitones up. We can go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If I go down a page and then down again, this is minus 12. Sorry, minus 12 there. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then you see we're back there, a step up back to the original um, back to the original key. If you decide you want to shift up and down the keys or in semitone, there's also semitone buttons here. So if the track's playing, even when you're not in the key shift mode, you can pitch the track up and down by semitones using these two buttons here. Again, master tempo puts it back to the original key. Moving back to hot cues, we've also got another feature which is new to Rekordbox called Keyboard, and that is if we hold shift and press hot cue, it then starts flashing and it shows up the hot cues that we've got set. Now, as soon as I press one of these hot cues, let's choose this one, it then maps that hot cue out to all the different semitones again. But this time, instead of key shift where the track continues to play, every time I hit a pad, it goes back to that hot cue and reactivates. And this is where tone play comes in. And this is a very popular technique used in a lot of the newer um, DJ competitions, something like Red Bull 3 style, all those DJs hammering out tone play routines, which is really cool. We've got access to all of these. And again, we can use the pages to go up and down to access even more um, keys and semitones. So you're probably already feeling pretty overwhelmed by how many features this has already got just in the performance pads. While we're talking about the performance pads, if you're into finger drumming, and this is probably what this unit is almost designed for with it being so pad orientated, um, they do feel very good, very responsive, literally. There's no click, it's like a controller pad, but they feel great, which is nice. Let's go to some of the more normal features, just moving up to the top of the unit. We've got a browse pot to scroll up and down the library. We've got load pot, so we can load buttons, sorry, so we can load different tracks to the left and right deck. There's a quantize button to turn quantize on and off for each individual deck if we wanted to. Um, the slip reverse, so if we're playing, it'll reverse the track, but then when you let go, it stays in time. It jumps back to where it would have been in the track already. All these buttons have secondary features as well. For example, if we hold shift and then press the int, we can go to deck three or on this side, deck four. You can turn off internal mode to jump to DVS mode and go back onto internal mode here. If you hold shift, you can change different sampler banks using the page so you can access different sampler banks. Um, the loops, we can turn active loops on and off, which is quite good if you use memory loops, which are located here. Memory queue, if we were to set a loop, we can then store it in the memory. And now if we press shift and this, it turns the active loop, let's turn it on, it turns the active loop on and off. If I go back. And you can see that red icon lighting up and disappearing and that's turning the active loop on and off whether you want the track to catch in to the loop when it gets there, as you can see on the screen in a second. And the loop's active, I don't have to touch anything. And then I can exit it track again. Next up we've got the beat sync. If you like to use sync mode then we've got access to it right here. And then the last thing which is a new feature again is silent cue. Now what this means is even if the track is playing you can't hear it. So if I press play here on this hot cue and then put silent cue on it silences the track. 
Now this means you can have the fader already up on your mixer and you can be straight in with a hot cue with it out loud and then it unsilences it and goes to that point. This is also great for doing um, breaks using the turntables so when you break the track you can load the next track have silent cue on, you can press play and then it won't play straight away, it'll be silent and then you can just jump to the hot cue you want. That's a really neat feature that's been added and it's just great to have a nice tactile button to turn it on and off right here on the XP1. Now stick with me because we've got one last thing which is amazing on this unit and this is brand new to Rekordbox. I thought that these slide effects would map out and would activate the effects that are already in record box, but they're not. You'll notice now on the screen we've got a new thing called SFX, which is Slide Effects 1. And there's actually some new effects in here that I've never heard before um, that are new to record box. So you can see them all here dub verb, for example, um, short echo, low cut echo uh, are all new. And then we've got loads of release effects here as well. How these work, let's just leave it on that, play the track, jump into the track a bit. Literally, turn an effect on and start sliding the effects level up. let go and it turns the effect off. If I slide it up I can turn hold on and it'll keep it there. It's indicated by that light and you can change the parameter. And that's really nice. You can jump onto a different effect. This one dub verb. And the last one I've got number three is a reverb out. So it's a release effect. It silences the track when you activate it. You can check out a few of them now. I'll just scroll through and show you them. Break echo. Let's do backspin, see if it's a cheesy backspin. Yeah, pretty cheesy. And the usual stuff. Let's try pitch echo. That's pretty new. Pretty cool, hey? These activate on and off, so when they're not on, it doesn't actually do anything. It wants you to activate them. And that's pretty much the unit in itself. Let's just pause the track where we are. One last thing I just wanted to point out is the pad effects. While I've been playing on it, I've found out that if you hold the pad effects and use them, and then jump onto a different mode, it still keeps the pad effects going, which is quite nice. And then you can jump to a different hot cue. And it keeps the pad effects going until you release and then they let go, which is quite a nice touch. I just wanted to share that just for anyone um, if you're intrigued as to what happened when you moved modes while holding the pad effects. So there you have it, the Pioneer DDJ XP1 in all its glory, but that's not the only way you can use it. If you happen to use the CDJ2000 Nexus 2s, you can literally, as long as you've updated to the very latest firmware, take the USB cable from the XP1, go straight into the USB port on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, then you'll have to have your USB device linked into the opposite CDJ or use the SD card slot and you can actually control the tracks right here using the XP1. So let's check it out. Nice. By the way, when it's in this mode, the hot cues work, but you can only do up to 8, you can't do 16. Pad effects are actually auto loop, not pad effects. Beat jump allows you to beat jump still, up and down. Turn off that loop and you can beat jump left and right, different parameters, just like here on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, but it just maps it out to this controller instead. Sampler doesn't do anything and pretty much nothing else apart from the loop modes here and the four beat loop work, quantize turns on and off. The other things though, let's try slip reverse, yep slip reverse works, slide effects don't work. So it's kind of your basic features that are already here on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, it just maps it out to this controller, still pretty cool. So as you can tell, pretty amazing piece of kit. There's so many features packed in there and it basically is Rekordbox 5.0's best friend. Um, reasons why I love it is no matter what setup you're using, whether you're using 
Um, old CDJs in DVS mode with Record Box or the brand new CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s or even the most intro of controllers like the DDJ RB. This is your comfort zone. This you can always plug into any setup as long as you're using performance mode and you've got your hot cues in the same place, your loops, your effects. It feels familiar no matter what setup you're on in different venues, different clubs. I'm constantly changing setups. Um, I've been a Serato DVS user for quite a few years now and I've been absolutely loved the DDJ SP1. I've been using it religiously for the past few years um, and this kind of bridges the gap. It's this but for record box and a bit better really. Um, I will say just while I'm holding it about the same weight look at the sizes if anyone wanted to compare the sizes we're about that much higher so for any SP1 users that bit extra width exactly the same width so that's that's your difference. Um, putting it next to my laptop, just so you can see, it's about the size of the screen. So it's got a decent size to it, um, so just bear that in mind. Now a few things to note, seeing as we've just been talking about Serato, I plugged it into Serato, it's not pre-mapped out, but it is a MIDI controller, so you can map it to any DJ software that's got MIDI mapping capabilities. Um, I might start working on a mapping for Serato, um, if anyone beats me to it, please share and we'll share it with the community. Um, if you're not happy in Rekordbox with the modes that it's given you, there's a really nice feature called Pad Editor, so you can go in and change any of the pad modes or any of the features just really easily. It's not like a complex MIDI setup, it's literally drop-down boxes. So that's a really nice feature that they've added on. And honestly, I can't wait to get stuck in with this. We're going to be making Sunday Skills videos, they're going to go on YouTube and Facebook. I'm going to put this through its paces, try and show some performance techniques on it, um, and just, yeah, very exciting add-on controller. If you've got any questions, please post them in the comments below. I bought this myself, so it's not going anywhere. I'll do my best to answer everyone, and thanks so much for watching. Please remember to comment, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff to help us keep doing what we're doing. My name is Jamie Hartley from Crossfader, and I'll see you next time.